In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the introductory material in thermal chemistry. Specifically, we're looking at calorimetry and specific heat capacity problems. We remember that calorimetry literally means to measure heat. So calorimetry's definition, the measurement of heat. One of the most important uh, concepts in that is something called specific heat capacity. And it's given the symbol C. The specific heat capacity for a substance is the amount of heat that would raise the temperature of one gram of that material by one Kelvin or by one degree Celsius. It will be the same, the same amount. For water, which has an extraordinarily high heat capacity, the value is 4.184 joules of heat would raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius or by one Kelvin. So we say the specific heat capacity for water is 4.184 joules per gram per degree or per degree cel or per Kelvin. Now there's also something called a molar heat capacity, which simply means you're raising the temperature of one mole of the substance by one degree Celsius um, instead of per gram. The device that's used to measure heat is called a calorimeter. And we have a simple picture of one here. This is just made out of coffee cups that are um, stacked together. So this is called sometimes a coffee cup calorimeter with a styrofoam lid. It's made out of styrofoam coffee cups because we want to insulate the inside. We want almost all of the heat, we ideally like all of the heat, produced in the reaction inside the cup to stay there. Or the heat, um, we also don't want any heat to enter the cup as well. We have a thermometer, which, which is used to measure temperature changes inside the cup, and a stirrer, which um, lets us keep the contents of the cup well mixed. Now, the cup is not perfectly insulated. The fact that there is a stirrer and a, a thermometer means heat can escape through those parts of the calorimeter. And we all know from everyday experience that although a coffee cup, styrofoam cup, does help to keep our coffee warm, it doesn't keep it warm indefinitely. So there's going to be some heat lost through the sides of any kind of calorimeter. But that's a simple device which could be made with, with everyday materials to measure um, heat. It's called a coffee cup calorimeter. So let's look at some simple questions. We're going to look at three questions which are found at the back of Zumdahl chapter 6 on thermochemistry. This is in the seventh edition of Zumdahl. Um, question 43 there says that we have a 5.00 gram sample of a substance listed back in table 6.1 and we're told it's heated from 25.2 degrees Celsius to 55.1 degrees Celsius and right there we can calculate a change in temperature and it required 133 joules of heat to, to do that, to raise the temperature by that amount. We're asked what substance was it? Well over here I've got table, the table that it's referring to, which is found in uh, Zumdahl chapter 6. This is table 6.1. Um, so it's, these are specific heat capacities for several different substances. So there's liquid water, which we said earlier had a heat capacity of 4.18. There's solid water, ice, which has a different heat capacity. And then several metals and carbon at the end. One of the things you should notice is that water has one of the highest heat capacities, liquid water. So a metals have much lower heat capacity, which reflects the fact that when a metal absorbs just a little bit of heat, its temperature rises dramatically. Metals get hot very, very quickly, um, where water does not. So coming back to this problem, we're going we're gonna to use, we're basically we're going to identify the substance by calculating the um, specific heat capacity of the substance. To do that, we're going to use one of the most important equations in calorimetry. And it basically comes right out of the definition of heat capacity, the specific heat capacity. The equation says that Q, which stands for heat, is equal to MC delta T. I sometimes call that the MCAT equation. So Q here is heat. And of course, heat is measured in joules. Then M is your mass, measured in grams. The C, as we saw earlier, is the specific heat capacity for the substance. 
and delta T is the change in temperature that occurs. So you notice in the question, we were given a mass, we were given a change in temperature, and we were told how much heat was required to cause the change in temperature. So basically the question is inviting us to go and calculate the heat capacity, and then we can identify the substance. So if we rearrange the equation, C will equal Q, the heat, divided by M delta T will equal it took 133 joules of heat. Okay, so you notice that the units for heat capacity are joules per degree. So you want the heat measured in joules. Divided by the mass of the substance was 5.00 grams. And delta T, change in temperature, is always the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So T final minus T initial is always used to calculate delta T. So if the temperature is rising, delta T will be positive because the final temperature is higher than the initial. If, del if the temperature were falling, delta T would be negative because the final temperature would be lower than the initial. So here we have 55.1 degrees Celsius minus 25.2 degrees Celsius. Notice in terms of the units for temperature, since we're calculating a delta T, it wouldn't matter if we left the units in Celsius or converted them to Kelvin. If we added 273 to each of those Celsius temperatures and then found the delta T in Kelvin, we'd have the same numerical value. So when we plug these numbers in on our calculator, 133 divided by 5, and then divided by, with brackets, 55.1 minus 25.2, I believe you get an answer of 0 0.89, and that'll be joules per gram per degree Celsius. That's our heat capacity, specific heat capacity, and looking at table 6.1, that would reflect aluminum metal. So the substance here was aluminum metal. Let's take a look at a, a second question. If you think you know what you're doing, you could pause here and try the question yourself and then come back and look at the answer. This is a standard um, thermochemistry question, calorimetry question. You've got 30 grams of water at 280 Kelvin. That's the temperature initial. It's mixed with 50 grams of water at 330 Kelvin. So we're mixing hot water with colder water, with cooler water, and we want to calculate the final temperature of the mixture, again, assuming no heat lost to the surroundings. So the, the statement, I always like to start a, a calorimetry question like this with a word statement. And I'm going to start by saying the heat that was lost by the hot water is equal to the heat that was absorbed by the cold water. Okay, that's the idea in all of these cal calorimetry questions in that coffee cup calorimeter. So you can imagine putting in the 30 grams of the cooler water in the coffee cup, pouring in the 50 grams of the hotter water, putting the lid on, stirring, and watching the temperature change. So the heat that was lost by the hot substance, in this case the hot water, is equal to the heat absorbed by the colder water. Well, we remember from the last question that heat is mc delta t. So we could say mc delta t, and I'm just going to put in brackets a subscript for the hot water, is equal to mc delta t and that's going to be for the cold water. Okay? But we have a small problem, if you think about this just for a minute. We, if you recall that when something warms up, its delta T is going to be positive, and when something cools down, its delta T will be negative, which means on one side of this equation, we're going to get a positive number, and on the other side, we're going to get a negative number. Hot water is, is losing heat, so it's, it's going to give us a, a negative value on the left, and the right side where heat's being absorbed, we're going to get a positive uh, value there. A negative quantity cannot equal a positive quantity. 
So what, to fix that, that problem, basically a sign problem, I'm going to throw a negative sign, and I'll just throw it here on the left side, but you could have thrown the negative sign on either side of the equation. Since the left side where heat was lost was starting off negative, by putting a negative sign in front, it'll now be a positive quantity, which was equal to the positive quantity where heat was being absorbed. If I threw the negative sign on the right-hand side, then both sides would be negative at this point. So we need to make one side positive and one that side negative because heat's being lost on one side and being absorbed on the other. So now, before we jump in and solve it, notice something interesting. Because the, we, we have water on both sides, this is really a special situation. If water is the substance on both sides, liquid water, then the heat capacities on both sides are equal and they'll cancel out. So we don't really need the heat capacities in this question. So we can simply say negative m hot, I'll put an h there, times, and I'm going to expand now my delta t, t final minus t initial, and that's going to be for the hot water, is equal to m cold times T final minus T initial for the cold water. Now since the cold and hot water are mixed together in the coffee cup calorimeter and we've stirred them throughout, the final temperature for both of them will be the same. Okay? The final temperature will be the same since they're in the same container. And that's always true in a calorimetry question. You put a hot object inside a, cold inside a cold water sample in a coffee cup calorimeter, the final temperatures are, are equal because they're together in the same container. So rearranging, we're trying to find the final temperature. So we have negative, the mass of the hot water was 50 grams, so 50 times T final is what we don't know minus the initial hot water temperature, which was 330 Kelvin, is equal to the mass of the cold water, 30 grams, 30.0 grams, times T final minus the initial temperature of the cold water, which was 280 Kelvin, okay? 330 Kelvin. You're simply going to multiply through the brackets here. At this point, finish off some basic algebra, rearrange and isolate TF, and you should find the final temperature, which of course I hope you realize has to be somewhere between these two temperatures, 280 and 330. The final temperature ends up being 311 Kelvin. Notice that it was closer in the end to the temperature of the hot water because we were mixing more of the hot water and less of the cold water. All right, so there's a very simple calorimetry question, but it starts off with a statement that we'll use a lot, a word statement, where the heat lost by something hot is equal to the heat absorbed by something cold. We then switch to our MCAT equations on both sides realizing that one side needs a negative sign to make the signs work out properly. In this question where the water was the same substance on both sides, heat capacities canceled out. If we had different substances, we'd have to simply use the heat capacities from a table okay, or given in a question. All right, let's try a third question. Again, you could pause and try the problem if you think you know what you're doing. This is, again, a standard, simple, basic question in, in calorimetry. We're going to be trying in this question to calculate a specific heat capacity of a metal. And, and you could do this in a lab. In fact, if you think about doing this in a lab situation, you've got 150 grams of a metal initially at 75 degrees Celsius. Perhaps it was sitting in an oven and you had a thermometer in the oven to tell you the temperature was 75 degrees Celsius. You left the metal in the oven for maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, to be sure that its temperature was equal to that of the oven. You had 150 grams of water, so maybe you poured the water, you measured the mass of your empty coffee cup calorimeter, 
you poured about 150 milliliters of water into it, you masked it again, and by difference, you found that there was exactly 150 grams of water. Your thermometer told you that the water's temperature is initially at 15 degrees Celsius. We take the metal and we carefully, quickly take it out of the oven and put it directly into the water without letting any water splash out of the coffee cup. And we put the lid on and we start stirring with that little stirrer and watch the thermometer's temperature change. And because we're putting a hot object in the, in the water, the temperature rises and the, t the question says that it rises from 15 degrees Celsius up to 18.3 degrees Celsius. So we have an initial and a final temperature for both the water and for the metal. We want to calculate the specific heat of the metal and again assuming no heat is lost by the container or during the experiment at all. So again we'll start with a word statement. The heat lost by, now what was hot here was the metal, so we'll say by the hot metal is equal to the heat absorbed by the cold water. Switching to MCAT and realizing that since one side has heat being lost while the other side has heat being absorbed, we'll need a negative sign on one side of the equation. So negative MC delta T for the metal put an M there for metal, is equal to MC delta T for the water, H2O. So what we're trying to find is the heat capacity of the metal. So that's the thing we don't know. If we rearrange the equation to solve for that heat capacity, the heat capacity of the metal will equal MC delta T for the water divided by negative m delta t for the metal. Okay, now let's quickly just put our numbers in and see what we get. So equals the mass of the water was 150 grams. The heat capacity of water we know is 4.184 joules per gram per degree. The delta T for the water, T final minus T initial, is 18.3 degrees minus 15.0 degrees. And again, notice we don't need to switch to Kelvin because it's a delta T that we're finding. So it's going to be the same in, in Celsius or in, in Kelvin. Divided by negative mass of the metal was also 150 grams and delta T for the metal. Now, again, remember that because the hot metal was put in the water, its final temperature is the same as the water's final temperature. So 18.3 minus its initial temperature, which was 75 degrees Celsius. Notice why we need that negative symbol there, because the metal which was cooling down is going to get a negative delta T the negative that we're adding on the bottom will give us a positive value in the end. The heat capacity for the metal, grab our calculator and evaluate that, is 0 0.25 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, so there we have it, uh, three basic calorimetry questions um, to involving the concept of specific heat capacity.